Okay. <clears throat> so uh, what we're going to cover today is the budgeting steps. Now, I just want to preface this uh, session with um, that you guys may have a lot of questions. And in many, I may not be able to answer right away, um, but we're going to dig through them um, together. And if we can't figure them out, um, then I'll find out and send an update um, after the session. Uh, the budgeting uh, module, I, it might look a little intimidating to people at first, but I think once you see the main points, uh, within it, it really isn't, um, there really aren't that many details to it, especially um, when you're in the proposed grids. So I think the probably the most time spent will be creating that scenario and um, getting that established. So what I've done is I have created a budgeting scenario steps in the appendix. <laughs> and so um, this will kind of give you guys an outline as to what needs to be done in order to create your scenarios, um, a promote them, and then going in, making any changes, and applying them. So you can take this and you can go in here and you know, print it off or export it into Word or whatever works for you guys in order to tweak this and make this your own for your districts. Um, I am getting some feedback noise, so just make sure that you guys have your phones muted. And then obviously, if you have any questions, please unmute yourselves. And, and, uh, and I will also make sure that I'm paying more attention to the chat. <laughs> I kind of ignored that the last session. So I've got it up here large on my other screen. So in case you guys have questions there as well, I'll address those. Okay, so um, looking at these budgeting scenario steps here, um, I've got kind of like a table of contents listed here that just kind of shows you um, the different steps involved with, with this. And what we're going to do is, if you guys, you know, are able to pull this up as well, we're going to kind of walk through this together and uh, um, attack each of these steps here. I am going to um, <clears throat> switch to my demo. Um, so you guys can follow along in here while I'm showing a demo of this. So I'm going to go into my instance here. And obviously the budgeting option is available up here underneath the core uh, or underneath the uh, menu here. So underneath budgeting, you're going to see two options. You're going to see the scenarios and then you're also going to see the proposed amounts. And so with um, the um, scenario option here, this is where you're going to create your scenario um, via spreadsheets um, that you're going to be creating within that scenario, and then those are going to be promoted to proposed amounts. Um, the next option, the proposed amounts, once those amounts have been proposed, um, promoted, they're next year proposed figures. And so from there, those budget and revenue amounts then are displayed underneath the proposed amounts grid. Um, so if they need to do some tweaking, add, delete um, amounts for proposed amounts, they can do that in that grid. And then once the grid is good and they're ready to take everything in that grid, because they have to take it all at once, they can't pick certain things, they have to pull the whole grid in, and then they're going to apply those amounts as initial figures. Um, so they can be doing this now for fiscal year 2020, uh, 20, or they can wait and do this until they get into that new fiscal year and enter the information the same way. But obviously, the key thing here is the year that they're putting in for their proposed amount. So obviously, right now, they're in fiscal year 2019. So they're going to be using a proposed amount here of 2020 for next year proposed. Now, if they were in fiscal year 2020 and had, maybe they did some next year proposed, but they have others to do, then obviously their proposed year is going to be 2020. So 
so, and then it's going to affect those initial budget figures and initial revenue figures. So we'll get into that here, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about once we're going in here and creating our spreadsheet. Okay, so I'm going to go click on, um, I already got scenarios pulled up here, and so there isn't much to this grid. If I go click on more, I've pretty much got everything in here. The ID isn't very um, helpful, um, but basically it's going to be the name and the, and the description of the scenario that I'm going to do. So I'm going to click on Create. And the first thing it brings up, I'm going to pull this over so you guys can see this better. If you want me to make this bigger here, let me see if I can. There we go. And so the first thing that it's going to ask me for is the name of my scenario. Um, and so what we definitely recommend is to have one scenario um, for the year. And the reason being, if you go in and create a scenario for all your budgets, and you go in and you apply or you know promote those and you apply them, and then you created another scenario for revenues, and you go in and um, apply those and promote those, it's going to remove your first scenario's figures. So um, what we recommend doing is making several spreadsheets within your scenario. So you can, and the districts can put in as many as they want. So I know just thinking off the top of my head, we have a couple of districts at Nawaka where one district in particular, she has about 20 to 25 spreadsheets she uses because she goes out, sends them out to um, the people that are in charge of those budgets, pulls them back in, and then she will then so she may have like 25 different spreadsheets within the scenario. So for my, for my example, I'm going to name this one, and my files are old. You'll notice that I'm in January of 2018, so my new fiscal year is going to be 2019. So I'm going to go ahead and type in fiscal year 2019 and make that the name of my scenario. And then in the description, I can be a little more descriptive here and say, these are my budget and revenue figures for fiscal year 2019. And so at this point, if I'm not ready to create spreadsheets or upload spreadsheets, I could just go in and just click on Save. All I'm basically doing is just creating the um, scenario, but I haven't really done anything with, with it yet. So, and you'll see here in the background that it does have it listed here. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to go in and start creating, and I can even go in and upload spreadsheets. So on that next um, set of a section there on that scenario steps, um, it basically is telling you that, that um, I can go in and do um, create a new budgeting spreadsheet, within this scenario, and I'm going to show you how to do that, and then we're going to then go in and upload spreadsheets that we've already created outside of here, upload those, and um, I don't pull them into the video. Okay, so I'm going to go back in and edit. And so what you're going to see here, down at the bottom, <laughs> I'm sorry, could you mute yourself there? Thank you. Um, you've got a create option and an upload. So the create is where you're going to go in and create the spreadsheet from within the budgeting scenario. And upload is taking outside spreadsheets, spreadsheets they've already created in Excel, and uploading those in. So I'm going to take you through the first option here, clicking on create. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the Create New Budgeting Sheet here. And the first thing that it's going to do is um, show you the properties that are going to get pulled into that spreadsheet. Now, the first thing I want to do is select a type. Am I talking budgets or revenue? So kind of similar to what you had in a probe, that's kind of the first prompt it would ask you, are these budgets you're doing or are these revenue accounts that you're doing? Um, I'm going to just let it default to budget. 
And so um, from there, I'm going down to the select properties. And like I said, these are the default properties. Now, we are going to be changing these. Um, I'll go into that in a little bit later, but we do have three or four um, enhancements um, that we need to make and a, a little bit of a, a bug fix that we need to make. And those are scheduled for the next release. So I will point those out here as we're, as we're going along. But um, a couple things that um, are missing is the description. I don't see the description in here. So I'm just going to go over and double click, or I can over, actually go over and slide it over and put it underneath. And so I want the description to show on my spreadsheet just because I just want to, you know, make sure that, you know, I, if I don't know my account codes very well, I can look at them by description. Um, I really don't need the prior year expendable and expended. I'm really going to be looking at my current expended and expendable amount. So I'm just going to get rid of those. And here is my current expended and expendable. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to get rid of, I really just want on my spreadsheet, which is nice because you can tailor this to what you want. I really just want those two, expendable and expended. I don't need the next year proposed. This is one of them that we're going to remove when on the next release because it's automatically going to create a proposed column. And so this is basically kind of a duplicate. So we're going to get rid of this one. Um, so that will not be part of the default properties on the next release. And so basically these are going to be the columns in my spreadsheet. So at this point, I want to filter. Um, I want to be able to pull in data for um, a specific function or a specific object code. Um, so I'm going to use an example here. I'm going to go ahead and pull in some cafeteria information. So I'm going to go to configure filters. So, you know, this is very similar to you guys working with reports and, you know, selecting properties on a report and configuring them. Same situation here. And so from here, there are certain things that I want to pull in, certain dimensions. And so I'm going to go down to code. That's where my account code dimensions are at. And I'm going to double click on fund because I want cafeteria fund. And I only want object codes between 400 and 900. So I'm going to pick on object code. And the fund is going to equal 006. And the object code is going to be greater than 400. And I'm going to click on object code again. And less than 900. So right now, when I'm going to create this spreadsheet, it's going to pull in all cafeteria fund accounts um, that aren't salaries and benefits, basically. And so I'm going to go ahead and name this now. And I'm going to click on Save. And it's going to give me a confirmation sheet here it's telling me that it's going to create a new budgeting sheet for my scenario, and it's going to run in the background. It may take several minutes. You may continue working in another browser tab while this process completes. These have been relatively quick for me, but again, um, I'm not doing a ton of accounts at once. So for a large district, pulling in everything, it may take a few minutes to get this thing um, created. But this should be pretty quick here when I click on Create. And so what happens then is after this gets created, I get a message saying, um, an in informational message just saying that the budgeting sheet creation is um, successful. So I'm going to click out of that. And you'll notice now that my cafeteria uh, sheet is in here. Um, so I've got one spreadsheet created so far for this scenario. Now, I've created basically like a bud work, but I don't have next year proposed amounts in there yet. So there are different ways that I can add those proposed amounts in here. So we added this um, this past year. This wasn't available last year. Is we 
do have an edit feature. And I'm going to take you into that here. I'm going to add another sheet and show you that one. Um, what I want to focus on for now is being able to download this. Um, what this will allow you to do then is take this and download it into Excel. So for those of you that maybe don't like the edit feature here or just so much more comfortable in Excel, you have the ability to take this spreadsheet we created and download it into Excel. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's just I have my browser set up to automatically download to my downloads folder. And you can give it whatever name you want. So I can call it cafeteria, budgets, whatever, or something like that. I'm just going to use the default. And I'm going to pull it up now in Excel. And enable edit here. And so what you're basically seeing is all of those 006 accounts that um, have that are between those account code dimensions, between 400 and 900 here. And so it's going to, this ID is called the UUID. It's basically the account code um, in a ID format. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't probably mess around with this as much. I would just ignore it out of sight, out of mind. I mean, you're focused on all of these. Um, if for some reason, you know, one of these account dimensions were, was missing for some reason, and you're trying to upload this spreadsheet back in, it's going to look at the ID because it's got the complete account code dimension. Um, so if you got rid of this, and accidentally also deleted one of the dimensions, you try to upload this back in, it's not going to work. So it's just a good idea to keep this out there in case something does happen with one of the dimensions. Um, the description here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and expand my columns here. My expendable amount and my expended, because those are the other two um, properties or fields that I had on that spreadsheet. Um, so at this point, I'm going to go in and enter in my proposed amount. You're going to notice here, I'm in fiscal year 18 right now, but what I'm trying to do are proposed amounts for fiscal year 19, and it brings up this um, column by default. So it's, it's kind of nice. You don't have to, to, work, to worry about that when you're creating a spreadsheet within um, the scenario here. Michelle, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now, but we missed okay. the piece about proposed amounts. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, let me just repeat that here. So what I was saying is that this comes up, the PA, this comes up by default. And so um, I was, I'm currently in fiscal year 18, so it's going to automatically default to fiscal year 19 for my proposed amounts here. Um, and so um, from here, what I'm going to do is I am going to I can either enter these in manually, it's kind of like the NYP main option of a probe, or I can um, create a formula. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm going to say, I'm going to base this off my expendable amount. So it equals um, K2 times, and I'm going to say a 3% increase from last year, 1.03. And so from here then, I'm just going to take this and drag it down, and it's going to automatically calculate the rest of them and give me basically a 3% increase from my current year expendable amounts. And basically that's all I really need to do. So I know that some of you may ask, well, what about the expendable and the expended? When you load that back in, what happens? The scenario is only looking at the account code dimensions, and the proposed amount. It's not looking at any of this other, just, the, just like a probe behaved. So when you did like the NYP load option, it didn't look at all of those. You got some type of warning message um, when it, the report was created saying that it doesn't recognize these columns. So I mean, it's basically the same thing here. It's not going to recognize those columns. It's just going to look at the dimensions and the actual proposed amount. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'm going to go ahead and X out of here. And so I have entered in my proposed amount. Now I'm going to go in 
and upload this back in. So I'm going to use the upload option here. And if you're not sure, just hover over these little icons here and it's going to show you. So it does give me a warning saying this operation is going to overwrite the existing sheet, which is what I want it to do. And I have to choose the file, obviously. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and this is one that I just created. And I'm going to start the upload. And it tells me that the file was uploaded successfully. Now what I like about this edit feature is, you know, I went in, updated these in Excel, brought them back in, but I kind of like to see this before I actually go in and start promoting things. So I click on this edit option just to kind of look to make sure that everything is there. And it is. It's my 006 account with my proposed amount. So I can go in here and make additional changes if I wanted to. If there are a couple accounts in here that shouldn't be, I can, I think I can right click. I'm not real comfortable with this spreadsheet yet. I haven't been in here very often. But yeah, I can go ahead and delete a row. I can insert a row if I want to. Um, I'm not sure how that works with the ID. Um, I haven't tried that. Um, but I can go in and make and delete things if I need to. Um, I can go in and I believe update amounts in here as well. So you can go in and make changes. If this really wasn't the correct amount, you need to override it, I can. So that's what's kind of nice about this editing feature here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel here to get out of that. So that's one way of creating your spreadsheet, is going in, <coughs> creating the spreadsheet, going into Excel to add the proposed amount, bringing it back in. So now, so far for this scenario, I've got one sheet created. Now I'm going to give you another way here to do this, um, and that's basically going in, and I'm going to click on Create again. And this time, I am going to pick on, I think it's my transportation uh, account. So again, I just want to see fiscal to date expended and expendable. So I'm going to get rid of the rest of these. And I do want to add the description again. And the description is going to be another field that's going to be um, a default field. They're going to add that one too on the next release. And I want to go over to configure filters. I'm going to go to code again. And like I said, these are going to be my transportation ones. So I want to pick on function this time. Now I'm going to use the like option here and say all 28. And also, I want to narrow down. I'm going to do the object again. Greater than and just pick on. <coughs> um, and, ex and just exclude the 100s and 200s again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. And just to point out again <clears throat> that it defaulted to budget, I could be doing a revenue spreadsheet as well by just going in here and clicking on this, the drop down to select revenue instead. But I'm just going to do another budget sheet. One other thing down here too, and I'm, I have to be honest with you, I haven't played with this yet, but there are certain saved queries. So I'm assuming um, you've got saved um, uh, grids, like reports on grids and stuff like that with certain filters like on like the account grid, I believe you can take that then and load that in here. And it will just populate your grid properties in here. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. And again, it's going to tell me that it's running. And this should be pretty quick. It tells me that the budget sheet was uh, created successfully, and here are my transportation um, budgets. So instead of downloading this into Excel and uploading it back in, I can use the edit feature to do this. So I'm going to click on edit. 
Um, I do have a question here. Is there something we need to configure or allow in the browser to be able to use the download option? I'm using Google Chrome and it doesn't download the file. Um, there must be something on your browser, I would imagine. I don't know if you just need to go to the download section underneath options of Chrome and go from there. It may have just downloaded it automatically. I'm not quite sure, but my I have Chrome right now. I'm using that and underneath um, mine, I have it set to ask me where I want to put a file. So if you go underneath the options there um, and underneath the download section, it should allow you to pick that. Okay, so it's bringing it up here again. And obviously, again, if I wanted to do that same type of formula and calculate by my expendable amounts or my expended amounts, and you'll see that PA 2019 again. So I'm, it feels like, you know, I'm, I'm in Excel. Um, and so from this point here, what I'm going to do is do that same type of formula in here. I'm going to say equals K2, I'm going to do it by the expendable amount, times 1.03. And then I believe I can take this then and pull it down. Pull the account. Well, I'm just going to do it to here because I want to show you something else too. So here are all my proposed amounts for fiscal year 19. And one thing I want to show you as well is if there are, you know, several accounts that I don't want, I got these, um, I forgot about these 9,000 special cost centers. If I don't want those included here, I can go in and either right click and delete this row. I believe I can highlight the whole thing here. delete. And it's going to get rid of those. So you can see within this edit option, I can go in and um, make changes in here, delete accounts, you know, add my proposed amount. So I don't have to go out and into Excel to do this. I can do it from here. But it is personal preference, whatever you know, everyone feels comfortable with. I'm going to go ahead and click on Accept. And so now I have my cafeteria budgets and I have my transportation budgets in here. I'm just going to go ahead, let's say I've got other things to do, so I want to save what I have in this scenario so far. I'm just going to click on Save. And I've got those two options. Um, and I've got those two spreadsheets in here so far. So you can see how, you know, right now districts can go in and create spreadsheets from here. Um, what I'm going to show you next is how to upload um, <clears throat> a spreadsheet um, into uh, this existing scenario here. So when you're thinking about that, the first thing you probably think of is, okay, what kind of format does my spreadsheet need to be in? And you'll notice on those scenario steps, if you scroll down past, we kind of covered um, the scenario grid options here. We covered the edit, how to download a spreadsheet, import it back in, and one I didn't mention, but it's pretty intuitive, is delete. If I've got a spreadsheet out here I don't plan on promoting, um, I can go ahead and click on delete and it will delete that spreadsheet from my scenario. But if you go past that, what you're going to see is um, Underneath the Upload Budgeting Spreadsheets into the, into the scenario, you're going to see how you can use the Upload option, obviously, to upload spreadsheets. But I have um, a special note there. I'm just going to pull up the steps here so we can look at this together. So I'm down to basically this Upload area here. So with that, these outside spreadsheets that you're uploading in must contain the account code dimensions in separate columns with the proper column headers. So, and then obviously you can have your proposed amounts in there as well, so everything's already taken care of and you're just uploading your proposed amounts in to here. So what I've done, and I went out looking to see if we had something out there in one of our template um, 
reports, and I couldn't find anything. Uh, maybe one of you guys have been through this already, and you have, but what I've gone ahead and done is I've created some template reports here um, that have the account code dimensions split out and also um, has that proposed amount um, next to your proposed column in there. So I'm just going to go in and just show you where these are at before we upload one. We're going to go ahead and um, create one ourselves. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to exit out of here. And so what you basically need to do, just going back here, these are JSON files that I have out here. So you're basically going to download this JSON file just like you would um, anything else. Download and save it in a folder and then take this file and import it into your instance. So if you guys have a test instance you want to play around with this, you can go ahead and do that. So these are just JSON file formats, RPD JSON file formats. So I've got one already uploaded in here. So I'm going to go to, re to my report manager, show you where it's at. So I have a budgets worksheet and I have a revenues worksheet. That is those two RPD JSON files I have listed in those steps. So with the budgets worksheet, I'm just going to open up the report definition first just to show you what I have in there. You guys can go in and tweak it, do whatever you want with it. But basically, I tried to use the same fields that you see in a, in a classic bug work is what I've tried to put in here. I don't think I included the percentage field, but I believe I have everything else in here, plus the three prior years. Um, so I kind of took the budget expenditure worksheet from the redesign and just made some changes to it. Um, by separating out the account code dimensions, and I uh, removed a couple of um, properties. So here are my, pro my properties, so all my different dimensions here. Um, the fiscal year to date, um, appropriated, prior carryover, my current expendable, current expended, next year proposed, we're going to be using that, and then it's also going to have my prior three years and their amounts. So, um, if I wanted to go in at this point and configure filters, I could, but if you're not planning on making any changes to the select properties, you basically, all you really need to do is generate the report. So i probably generate it from the home or from the report manager using that generate option to get this information. And then from here, I can filter. So. Some of, you know, as you guys know, some of the districts have very specific account dimensions that they want to create budget uh, sheets for, because they may be taking this spreadsheet and sending it off to somebody or sharing it. They can share this report uh, definition with a role, um, but they may also be emailing it to people saying, please open up this spreadsheet, enter in your proposed amount, and send it back to me. Um, so in here, well, one thing that uh, they can do is they can enter beforehand, the treasurer's office can create account filter um, with those specific um, account code dimensions in there. Um, that's really the only way that you can get pretty elaborate with your filtering um, because there aren't as many options in here to do that. So I do have a filter out there. I think for high school principals is what I'm going to run this for. So I've got an HS um, print account filter that I created underneath utilities. I've already got that out there that has specific things I want to include on this report. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and generate this. And you notice that I have this um, template set up to be formatted in Excel data um, because it will have the correct column headers for it to get uploaded um, back into my scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So basically, if a district if the treasurer's office is sending this to somebody, they're going to send the spreadsheet to them or share this with them. 
And then that user then is going to go in and you'll see, you know, you've got your account code dimensions, you have the description, you have all of those same fields that you had in the old bud work. And you do have your fiscal year amounts <coughs> and fiscal years. I'm just going to open these up, open up the whole thing here so you can see it better. <coughs> and I know it doesn't look very pretty, but I think you guys get the gist of what you're seeing here. So these are the prior fiscal year expended amounts. So 2017 is this one, 16 is this one, and 15 is this amount. And so for me to use this spreadsheet and upload it into um, my scenario, all of the column headers are fine. Um, the only one that isn't is my next year proposed. So for this one, I do have that noted in here, I believe that when entering your proposed amounts, you must change the next year proposed column to that format, PA hyphen, and I'm going to say 2019. And then from here, I'm going to get, again, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put in 5,000 and then just pull this down. But I can do a formula as well. Enter in my next year proposed amounts. And at this point then, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so I've got my spreadsheet out there. So, you know, you kind of thinking about this with districts. They can have the standard budget worksheet they use for all of their end users who are in charge of these budgets. Send those to those end users. They send them back, and then the treasurer's office can take these and upload them into the scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. And I'm going to go back into my scenario that I've already created. And I want to edit this. I want to open it back up. And this time, I'm going to use the upload option, uploading an outside spreadsheet. And the first thing it's asking me for is what's going to be my sheet name here. Say high school principal account, and I could enter a description. And the minute I click off of the sheet name, um, I'm going to be able to go in and choose my file. And this is the one I was saved and start upload. And it tells me that the file has been uploaded. And again, here it is, my high school principal. If I just want to check it, just to make sure that everything's there, I can click on the edit feature, and it should bring up everything. So, and it does. It, my account filter, my HS Print account filter, was for any 2421 function codes uh, with an object codes between 400 and 900 for all OPUs. It's, or it should have been just for high school, but we'll just ignore that for now. <laughs> And so you'll see then also my proposed amount here. That looks good to me. So everything looks good. And so at this point now, let's say I have all of my worksheets done for fiscal year 19. So I've got them all created or uploaded in here. I'm going to save this. The next step then is to promote this scenario here. So you only can't do that within the budgeting scenario here. You have to do that from the grid. And so here is the option to promote the scenario. So again, if I want to view what my scenario has, I can click on view. If I want to edit what's in my scenario to add more uh, spreadsheets, just like we did, I click on this edit feature. And obviously, if I've totally messed up and I want to start all over, I can delete this. And what you're going to see eventually is a grid of every year. So, you know, some people may want to do two scenarios if they're doing maybe a levy this year. They're not sure if the levy is going to, um, you know, pass or fail. So they may create a scenario for if the levy passes, and then they may also create a scenario for if the levy fails. And obviously they, you know, they will only, you know, um, select just, the one depending on the uh, levy issue. 
So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and promote this. And so what this is telling you is that the promotion will replace existing proposed amounts for the fiscal years related to this scenario. So this is my fiscal year 19 information. So if I had proposed amounts already sitting out there, this is going to replace it. So like I said, if I was doing high school budgets and then I went in um, and did uh, high school revenues, you know, after this, my high school budgeted amounts are going to get wiped out. So again, that's why having just one scenario makes the most sense and it's far less confusing. Um, so I've got everything in here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on promote. Now, what's happening here is it's spinning and it's thinking about it and it's telling you it's going to take these and promote them to underneath budgeting, the proposed amounts grid is basically. So at this point, they are becoming next year proposed amounts. So this will finish, but not until after the next release because we have an issue to fix this right now. It's working, but the spinning win window isn't going away. So that will be out on the next release as well. While this is, and because I don't know how long this is gonna to take to do these accounts, I thought I would show you, um, I think I've got it underneath the JIRA issues here, the budgeting issues that are supposed to be on the 719 uh, release here. And one of them is this one right here, budgeting scenario promotion co confirm pop-up doesn't close. Um, so that's what we're dealing with right now, but that will be fixed. Um, the implement of cloning budget scenarios, that is something they're working on, but you won't be able to use it this year. So I'm not going to show it to you because it's just going to confuse everybody, so you can ignore that. Um, improvements to the budgeting sheets, that's where I was talking about uh, the descriptions, um, like the description wasn't in there, and getting rid of the next year proposed, just cleaning up those properties. Um, um, so I think those are the ones that are actually relating to the budgeting scenario here. Some of these are other things that are outside of that. But I just wanted to point that out to you. So. I'm going to go back in, and this should be done. Um, so I'm just going to X off of this. That's what's going to have to happen for now until so that gets fixed. And event, you know, what, what's going to happen is after that release, it's going to bring up and tell you that it was promoted successfully and stuff like that. So the end user has some type of confirmation that everything got uploaded as next year proposed amounts. So with that, now when I go down to budgeting and go down to the proposed amounts, I should see those, um, all of those accounts in here. <clears throat> and so it did work, it just, unfortunately, that box kept spinning. Um, so when you think about my different, I had three different worksheets. I had one for the principals, and that's this one right here. I had one for transportation all of these, and I have my cafeteria. So those are all in here. And so if I were to go out to this particular account underneath core accounts and underneath the expenditure tab, I would see this $5,000 in that next year proposed amount field. So it's going to be stored in this grid for easy access, and it's also going to be stored underneath core. Um, so at this point, what I like about this, it's kind of like a working grid. If there are things that need to be changed, deleted, added, they can do that in here. And basically all, your, all of that this is changing is your proposed amount. And so in this example here, um, I'm going to go ahead and just look at this first one here. I've got several different options. I've got the ability just to view it to edit it or to delete it. So it's not going to delete the account, it's deleting the proposed amount on the account. So I'm going to go ahead and click on edit just to show you. This little pop-up window comes up and it's going to have the account code listed. Um, the fiscal year, so we are, these are my fiscal year 19. So if I want to go in here and change this to 4,000, I can't. So they can go in and make changes to any of these amounts that they need to. So it's nice if they, you know, have a bunch of accounts in here and they just 
realize that, you know, their 006 accounts, some of them aren't correct. They can filter down to that particular um, dimension and then go in and make any changes that they need to. Also, um, they can go in and uh, create. So if I wanted to, I could go in and enter in an existing budget account the fiscal year, so 2019, and the amount, and when I click on save, it'll add that uh, next year proposed amount or that proposed amount to, to this grid. Um, I can also go in and delete. If I just totally messed up on all my 006 funds, um, I've got it already filtered. I can click here and click on delete, and it will get rid of those in my next year proposed grid. So not only does it remove those proposed amounts from here, it'll also remove them, uh, the proposed amounts from the proposed amount field on the account. So if you go and look it up underneath the account, you're going to see that it's no longer there. So it's kind of, it's looking at both places. Okay. Any questions so far? <clears throat> So at this point, and you'll notice too, one thing I didn't note up here <clears throat> is that we have two separate tabs. We have one for budgets and one for uh, revenues. I didn't load any revenue information in, so we should not see any in here unless I had something. Um, so yes, yeah, so we don't have anything in here. So I just have all my proposed. So once everything is in, for the fiscal year, this is your Really, t oh, there we go. And so um, from here now, what we need to do is we need to go in and apply these. So districts can do this. So these are my next year proposed amounts for 19. Um, the user can do this now. So if let's say they're in, you know, May processing, June processing, they can go in and apply these for the next fiscal year. Obviously, they won't see those new amounts in the initial budget, initial revo revenue, until they make that month current. So until they make July current. So, but they can do this ahead of time if they're like, you know, I'm the adjust person who feels comfortable with that plastic. I'm gonna wait until I close out for the year and then load these in. They can do that as well. Because right now they are next year proposed amounts. This is like we've already taken care of the NYP options in a pro, so we've done that part. But now we want to do the adjust part of making them my initial estimates for the new year. Like I said, I can do that now if I want to. Um, and so I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> um, but like I said, they can wait until they're in the new year to do this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on select them all. <clears throat> And I'm going to click on Apply. And we get to this particular box here. And so we've got a few different options here um, that they can do, okay? So what this is basically saying is I'm applying my, um, basically my temporary or permanent initial budgets or anticipated revenue amounts for the fiscal year selected, which is fiscal year 19. If the posting period associated with this date and or doesn't exist, it's gonna create it. So I don't have July of 2019 created. Um, if I go and look at my posting periods underneath core, it's not a month that I have created yet. So it will create July for me. And so at this point, I have three different options to choose from. I'm gonna click on temporary first. So this is um, the temporary option. So what this is going to do is if this is selected, you'll notice too by default um, that the full year is also checked here. So this is basically indicating that these are going to be my temporaries 
for the full fiscal year. So at the same time, it's also going to update the GAAP original estimate. So if I want that you know, $5,000 figure that's going to be in that budget account for my expendable figure, if I want that to also be my GAAP original estimate, I'm going to make sure that this update um, uh, box is checked. So if temporary is selected and the full year is not checkmarked, can do that. Um, this is going to imply that these are temporary initial budgets that could be changed during the fiscal year. So if a levy um, doesn't pass, um, that these can be overwritten. And this is all just basically audited in the background to show which one you selected. So again, if you anticipate these being your temporaries for the new fiscal year, um, you would leave it defaulted, and you'll notice that the effective date is, is you don't have a choice, it's going to be July 1st. But if you're not sure because of a levy issue or something like that, then you can go ahead and uncheck that. It's still going to put those amounts on the initial budget field, so it's not like they're going to see anything different. But in the background, like running an audit report and things like that, they're going to see that these are going to be considered temporary, not full year. Okay. <clears throat> the permanent option is basically saying, and you notice with the permanent, I don't have the option to update the GAAP original amounts. It's going to update them. And the full year is, all, is check mark too, so that can't be unchecked. This is basically implying that these are my permanent initial figures for the year. <clears throat> so again, when you look at it on the account, you're going to see those initial budget figures, and it's not going to look any different from the temporaries. But behind the scenes, when it's audited, like like if you, they wanted to look at the audits report, it's going to show that these are my permanent. Um, figures, initial budgets for the year. So this is basically like the IEB options of a probe. That's what these are, temporary and permanent. It just depends on how the district wants to use them. The last one is adjustment. So this is the PAB main option in a probe. So this is going to work differently than the other two. So this is going to adjust the existing amount via additions or deductions. So if I have $5,000 in there and now I'm going in and um, uploading this and making it um, <clears throat> you know, $6,000, I'm going to see a $1,000 adjustment made or $1,000 um, addition made to that account. And you'll notice that it's got the effective date is modifiable here. <clears throat> so um, this is something just different than what you were used to in, in Classic. If I don't want those adjustments to show until September, I can put in a September date here, and those additions will not be effective until that date, until I'm in that current period. Now, I have to be honest with you, I have not played with this um, <clears throat> thoroughly to see, you know, each different option to, and try to run it and see what it does. So I would recommend going out there and, and kind of playing around with these different options and seeing what the accounts look like. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do the permanent option here and click on Apply. <clears throat> And so, you know, I just don't want um, districts to be alarmed that this is overriding their 19 budgets because they're not in 19 right now. So it's not or that it's overriding their 18 budgets, I'm sorry, <clears throat> because they're in 18 right, right now. Because I'm, you know, saying this is for fiscal year 19, they're not going to see these amounts until they make July current. Then they'll see these new figures. So this will no way impact their fiscal year 18 figures. And I'm not sure how long this is going to take for this. So any questions while that's running?
So what happened is I get an informational message saying that that posting period was created um, as a result of this process. So if I go out to the posting period, um, and I'm just going to write one of these down just to show proof that it didn't affect anything in fiscal year 18. So this first one, my 006-3120-416, has 70, $772.50. I'm just going to make note of that here. <clears throat> so if I go over to core and posting periods first, I should see <clears throat> that July has been um, open. So it's, obviously it's not current. So if I wanted to close this right now, I can't. So it did open it for me to do this, but if I don't want this period to be open, I can go ahead and close this. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go in and look at one of these accounts. And I wrote down here. <clears throat> and my O six fund. And I'm just gonna do this. And you'll notice that it did not touch my initial budgets. It shouldn't, because I'm still in 18. And it still should be showing as a next to proposed amount of 772.50. Now, if I would go in here now and change my posting period, and make July current, and then go in and look up that same account. That 772.50 should be my initial budget, which it is. And also, I selected the permanent option. It also made my gap original budget. And obviously, I'm in the new year, so those next year proposed amounts are now my initial budgets. So now that I've got you guys' mind spinning here and all these different, the flexibility of this, I mean, I didn't have the flexibility. It just kind of controlled everything in Classic. Um, do you guys have any questions? My group today. Well, I hope that this helps and, and having this budgeting scenario steps available here, you guys can take these <clears throat> and tweak them. And also you can look at the budgeting chapter in the user guide as well. And um, what I did is, you know, we broke down the two different options underneath budgeting. Um, scenarios, proposed amounts, and it's got all this information, you know, it, it, in a little more detail in there. And I also provided that same scenario steps in there for a quick guide. Michelle, I really like what you did there, adding all of that on the same page. That's, that's really nice. Great. Good. It's, it was a challenge to try and come up with a very basic, I didn't want to get too wordy <laughs> on that um, spreadsheet, on that oh, budgeting step. So, you guys feel free to get rid of stuff that, you know, I was too wordy on or add, you know, steps for your districts but and break it apart. Um, but, I, you know, it, it really does depend on what the districts are going to use. Are they going to use the option to upload a lot of spreadsheets in? Or are they going to be creating their spreadsheets from the scenario? Or they might be doing both. But to let them know that they have those options 
um, I think is going to be, you know, just a really good tool for them, then they can decide what they want to do. Any other questions? I do know that um, next week, Lori is going to be going over the payroll next Friday. She'll be going over the last few um, payroll releases and hitting the highlights from those releases. So that's what we have scheduled for the month of April between the budgeting and that. Um, like I said, in May, I think I said this yesterday in the touch base meeting, in May we do have our fiscal year end um, webinars already set up on the 17th and the 25th. The 17th is going to be classics and, um, and the 24th is going to be the redesign. So Lauren and I thought it would be best to separate them out uh, because there you know, may be a lot of questions and that would almost be like a full day to cover both classic and redesign um, fiscal year end step. So we thought it'd be best to break them out. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you guys, I know this is kind of a little off topic, but for those of you um, that are you know, involved in wave three, um, I just wanted to let you know we are keeping up updates on who's um, implementing um, the districts uh, what wave, what ITC they're from, and stuff like that. So I kind of wanted the ITC fiscal staff, you guys, to go in and just kind of review these to make sure that we have everything correct. I know a couple of you guys said yesterday that you may have districts that are going to start dual processing this week. I didn't change those. We don't change them until you absolutely tell us in the touch base they are dual processing because that could always change. Um, same thing with go live. If you're saying they're going to go live this week, um, I don't put it change it until I know for sure that they are live. So um, if you guys kind of look that over and if you see that there's any mistakes or anything, let me know. But it's just a good point of reference for everybody to see where we're at. And you know, and uh, you can go in here and you can change sort the status. And so you'll see that we still have a lot of districts still processing. And I know just off of the touch base meeting yesterday, a lot of people um, are going to be um, going live here in April and May. So this is really exciting. So we've got a lot of districts out here. Um, and one other thing, too, I wanted to point out is just going back to the budgeting, um, the April newsletter, which I should be getting out here within the week, um, is going to provide those budgeting steps. And I'm just going to have a couple other little blurbs about the five-year forecast and calendars on payroll. Um, so that should be out here within the next week. Um, if you're having any trouble with any of your districts subscribing to the newsletter, <laughs> let me know. I've had a couple people tell me that um, they haven't been able to subscribe, but then others have. So if you're having any problems with that, um, with that subscription uh, check mark at the top of the newsletter, let me know. Any other questions? Okay, I want to thank everybody. Um, like I said, this is going, this is recorded, so for those that have missed this, I'll go ahead and put that out there on the Friday webinar link so that you guys can reference this later. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Thanks, Michelle. Michelle. You, you too. too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.